Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Darren. I am one of the marketing coordinators with BCIT's School of Health Sciences, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to this information session for the Occupational Health and Safety Diploma Program. Uh, we are very happy to see you all, and thank you for attending our presentation today. And just before we get started, I want to mention that the British Columbia Institute of Technology acknowledges that our campuses are located on the unceded traditional territories of the Coast Salish nations of Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, and Musqueam. And tonight's agenda, just going to do a quick welcome and introductions uh, with a quick poll. We'll watch a short video and then we'll go through the presentation and program overviews. We'll get some program advising information and then we'll do questions and answers at the very end. And right before I introduce uh, Bobby, the program head, I'm just going to bring up a poll for everyone so we can check where you're at. What industries do occupational health and safety professionals typically work in? Uh, government agencies, heavy industries like construction, massage therapy, or anywhere there are workers. And now I'm going to hand it over to uh, Bobby Sidhu, the program head for the Occupational Health and Safety Diploma Program. Take it away, Bobby. Thanks, Darren. So yes, I think it looks like everybody got it right. Um, the graduates of our program work anywhere there are workers, and that's quite a broad array of industries. I, I will do an overview of that a little bit later in the presentation. And uh, just before we I get into my talk, uh, Darren, I think is going to launch a video presentation, just a little overview of our program from a... Uh, uh, graduates and students. I love my job because I get fulfillment from it, knowing that people get to go home safe every night at the end of the day. Working with people, I mean, it's a huge part of what I do day in and day out. Uh, working with the juniors, the apprentices, even the executives on trying to help them understand their health and safety responsibilities. Occupational Health and Safety Diploma Program at BCIT is second to none. It really prepares you for the on-site, real-world situations that you're going to come up against. And that's why I chose BCIT. BCIT's Occupational Health and Safety Diploma Program is the most comprehensive program of its kind in Canada. Our students get in class lectures and labs, but also hands-on experience and a practicum on site to give them practical knowledge. Our students learn to recognize, evaluate, and control a variety of workplace hazards and worker exposures, such as noise exposure, lighting, fall protection, and any other chemical contaminants that might be found on the workplace. Every industry will require some type of safety. So whether I choose to stay in healthcare or move into oil and gas or into mining or into engineering, there will always be a job for health and safety professionals. Every day knowing that the workers get to go home safely to their family, to their children, that is probably the number one factor in me pushing forward to get this done properly and correctly every day. What is occupational health and safety? So our career is actually quite a broad career. There's, it's hard to describe that what we do in any one day. Um, you saw there that William's job had a lot of field part to it, um, but there's lots of roles that are actually very office oriented. It really depends what industry you get into. Um, and again, as he said, it's really about protecting the health and safety of workers in the workplace. So who is it right for this, this career? First off, people who are strong communicators. Uh, a lot of what we do requires us talking to workers. It, talks us, it requires us talking to supervisors. It requires us talking to regulators and um, um, executives with companies. We have to, uh, with union members, we have to talk to a wide variety of people and uh, really um, to investigate and solve problems. So, uh, you know, the most important skill in our industry is actually communication skills. We also want our applicants to have about two to five years of work experience because it is a job where you have to deal with people and relate with people. Um, experience is an industry and it could be any industry. We get people from heavy industry, 
to retail, right? It really doesn't matter where you've worked, but where jobs where you've had to deal with people is is an is somewhat of an important um, prerequisite to entering the program. So we have two program options. And as Darren mentioned, I'm the program head of the BCIT Occupational Health and Safety Diploma Program. That is our two-year full-time program. Um, and I'll, I'll get into that a bit more. Um, but really, it's, it's a broad spectrum program that covers not only health and safety, but business, human resources, communication, and a number of um, you know, science-based courses as well, too. We also have a part-time um, certificate program, a self-paced flexible learning program. Um, which is two parts, and that's an associate certificate and a certificate of advanced safety management. So the associate certificate um, in the foundations of OHS, if you're interested in our flexible learning, is seven courses or 20 credits. It usually takes about three terms um, and on the outside, 18 to 24 months for someone to complete. And this is really geared for people who are working professionals. Maybe they've fallen into safety, um, put, been put on a JOSH committee, or they're established health and safety professionals who are trying to get the academic requirements to meet the national health and safety certification. So this one meets the requirements of the Canadian Registered Safety Technician, um, one uh, an entry level credential um, at a national level. And once you've completed that, you can continue on and do the certificate in bad safety management. And that's uh, about 14 to 15 credits, uh, depending on what mix you take, and it's 45 total. And this really moves someone from that um, entry level position into a senior safety ma uh, management role. And so you need to take the OHS foundation certificate and then complete the advanced. And that meets the academic requirements of the Canadian Registered Safety Professional. Um, certification. Now, uh, please note that th that only these together only meet the academic requirements. There is also an experience requirement for that certification, and then a and an exam, a national exam. Um, and if you are interested in that program, um, you can reach out to David Wood. He is the program head uh, of the flexible learning program, and his email contact is there below. So, with the respect to the diploma program, um, what do we learn in the program? If you're a student, well, safety management administration skills, particularly, um, you know, uh, uh, safety leadership and how to get culture within organizations into a, um, you know, a safety culture that is it promotes uh, practices that ensure workers are are in a, uh, again a safe working environment. Particularly, we work on conflict resolution skills. We look at various categories of. Um, you know, uh, jobs. We look at forestry, mining, oil and gas. We look at manufacturing, government sector. So we get into very technical skills as well too. And so our graduates can uh, operate as generalists, um, OHS practitioners in any sector, or they can move into specialist roles. So from a specialist perspective, you can work as a occupational health officer or an occupational safety officer, an ergonomist, um, a disability management environmental management, emergency management, you know, those are six streams that come right out of our occupational health and safety program that we've had graduates go into um, with no further education, just completing our program and then, um, you know, specializing after they've started working. And so you get various levels from safety officer all the way to senior safety management. So what does it look like in a day-to-day? -day? Um, our classes are a combination of lectures and discussions and usually about 30, 35 I, would, I actually did a count the other day. It's about 33 hours a week, um, both in the first year and the second year. Um, we do case studies. There's research and field work. Our students have a, a capstone project they do with an industry partner. Um, we have a number of laboratories where they get into occupational hygiene. And uh, that's not like the hygiene of the teeth. It's, it's, it, we're talking about the cleanliness of the work environment. And again, cleanliness in the sense we're talking about air quality. We're talking about chemical hazards and biological hazards. Is it a safe work environment? From occupational disease, uh, from an occupational disease perspective, versus an occupational injury, we talk. We get into fire protection, as I said, ergonomics, and as well as disability management, as I said, and emergency management. Um, a lot of individual and a lot of group work, so a lot of team building. Um, and and mentioned uh, as mentioned in the second year, we have this capstone um, audit program, which is a safety program review. Uh, fuel trips, you know, we're taking the students out to a construction site um, in a couple of weeks um, where one of our industry partners is going to walk them through uh, the project, uh, this very large project that's going on and some of the challenges they have from an OHS perspective. So one of the key benefits of the diploma program over the flexible learning program, uh, is particularly, is the amount of networking that happens in our day school program. Um, so BCIT puts on its own career fairs. We have long established relationships with the Canadian Society of Safety Engineering, 
uh, the American Industrial Hygiene Association, um, the BCU Con chapter. So they hold host monthly meetings. Um, our students sit as executives, student executives on both of these organizations, as well as the as well as um, the National Ergonomics uh, Association. Um, there's professional development opportunities for students right within the program. There's a number of conferences that our students go to that are funded uh, by um, the agencies. Uh, for example, the Western Safety Conference is uh, the largest uh, health and safety conference in Western Canada is happening in a, uh, next month. And all our first year students have been given free admin uh, attendance. And um, that's about a seven eight hundred dollar uh, ticket. So um, again, thanks to our good, strong relationships with industry, uh, you know, we have a lot of guest lecturers who come in as well too. And um, you know, sometimes they come to talk about where they work and the industry they work in, and sometimes they're coming in to give a guest lecture, but also look to hiring students. Um, specifically, we want to come in and present, and then we want to take resumes. That's that's quite common in our program. Um, and uh, and we also have North American Occupational Health and Safety Week, which we participate in. So um, you know, our our mix right now is about 70% of our students already have a bachelor's degree. So a lot of them are coming out of UBC, SFU and other programs. Um, and then they come into our program to do the two years to get a, a focused career. 10%, um, I would say, yeah, probably 10% is our WorkSafe sponsored students or related organizations. Sometimes it's a um, veterans uh, affairs will send a student and the remaining, you know, 10, uh, 15 to 20% are international students, usually masters, PhD, medical doctors, um, come through our program as well. So we have a very diverse um, cohort um, in our program coming from very different um, backgrounds. And they come from very different work experiences. I guess, as I said, I'll have landscapers sitting next to medical doctors, sitting next to students who worked uh, in retail or health authorities or students who have worked um, as electricians. Uh, it's a very, very, very different mix than you'd find, I think, in any other program. And the median age is uh, about 30, but we have everything from, you know, we've had some high school grads come through our program, all the way to people in there, um, you know, they've had a full 20 year career and now they're looking to specialize in safety in their, in their uh, late 40s or early 50s. So it's quite a mix. So what do you do as an OHS practitioner? Um, well, it, that varies depending on where you work. It it's, can be quite different in different organizations. You, you develop, implement, monitor, and evaluate safety management programs. So organizations, um, you know, the larger they get, have a regulatory requirement to how the self health and safety um, management program. So those need to be implemented and maintained. Working with regulators now, whether that's WorkSafe BC or Labor Canada, if you're provincial or federal, and, and other regulators as well that will come in and do investigations or inspections of facilities. Uh, interpreting legislation is one of the key outcomes that our students get that allows them to work anywhere. I mean, we have students who have no experience in a particular industry, but will get a job because, you know, they know how to, how to understand, sorry, they understand how to interpret legislation for the employer so they can be compliant with the legislation. Um, developing uh, and delivering uh, safety training programs, uh, doing health and safety promotion strategies, um, you know, leading committees such as Josh Joint Occupational Health and Safety Committees or Disability Management Committees. And maybe conducting technical assessments like air quality, noise, temperature, vibration, sampling. Now, a lot of the times they're not going to do that, but they, we teach them how to do that so they can hire a consultant. And when the consultant gives them the report, they can interpret it for implementing control. So we still, our students learn all this stuff and some of them will go do it, but a lot of them just need to understand how to interpret the information. So we, we cover quite a wide um, area of expertise for our graduates. So a day in the life of, you could be doing inspections one day, you could be in the office, so out in the field, you could be doing uh, policies and procedures, writing them in the office, you could be doing risk assessments, you could be out de developing a train, uh, delivering a training session. Um, if there's an accident or injury, you might be called upon to do an investigation. Uh, you might be um, coordinating a, a committee meeting with either WorkSafe coming into the site and talking to them or your joint occupational health and sa safety committee help, help with that. Um, delivering toolbox talks. As I mentioned, you might do noise and air sampling or when you hire the consultant, you're there on site while they're doing it um, just to make sure that you're happy with the quality of what they're doing. Um, and then of course, program reviews such as OHS program reviews or respiratory program reviews or disability management program reviews. Um, so, you know, it varies. Some, some of our grads spend a lot of time in the office doing office work. Some of our grads spend a lot of time in the field, like particularly grads who will go into construction, spend at least half of their time um, at various sites and half time in the office, where if you work at, you know, maybe like a big, um, like Loblaws or something, a lot of the time you're going to be in a corporate safety role. So 
again, the role you have varies quite a bit by the organization and the type of work that that organization is engaged in. So what are our grad outcomes? So the range is about 65 to 95K. I would say uh, consistently over the last couple of years, um, the average salary is 75. It's almost the base. Um, I say 65 because there are still job postings out there at the 65 range. Um, uh, so, you know, I've got to be transparent about that. But the reality is our students generally don't take them. Uh, 75 is kind of the minimum um, that they do end up taking. Um, there's a lot of opportunity right now. One of my summer students just had a conference call with me this morning because uh, they have four, uh, they've been offered four different positions and they're just a student and they don't know which one to say take and which one to know to say no to. Um, so it's it's a really good right now from an OHS perspective, from a career perspective. And we do have grads, new grads who get into the um, 85, 90 right out the door. I've had one get 100K out the door. You know, it's not the norm, but if you have previous work experience, it is definitely possible because particularly in our career, we don't throw away our previous work experience. It actually uh, dovetails quite nicely with our OHS um, credential and it lets you enter industry at a more senior level compared to a lot of programs. Um, so 75 on average, but you know, a fair number of grads will get more than that um, when they when they graduate from the program. And um, experienced grads, um, six figures is 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 quite easy and a lot of contract work. Um, right now, it's just, you know five to ten years, but I would say I have grads within two or three years who are breaking the six figure mark right now just because of the late, the the just the lack of OHS professionals out there. And particularly in BC, we have a very labor friendly government that puts a lot of focus on health and safety. So that has really helped our job and salary outcomes. So lots of um, benefits as well, um, you know, health benefits, extended benefits, um, you know, contribution pensions and defined benefits pension if you take a government role. So lots of good benefits packages. So what the job title can be, it varies again with the organization. You get OHS coordinator, environmental specialist, officer, manager, um, you know, uh, health and uh, safety and security manager, safety and security director, uh, OHS advisor is a common one, sometimes consultant, sometimes it's HSE. That's also become a common term now. Instead of OHS, you see HSE, so health, safety and environment um, versus occupational health and safety. But, you know, a lot of the time the people do the same role um, is just kind of a changing language around what we do, because uh, there's a fair amount of work that we do now that touches into the environment space as well. 95% um, of our grads are employed within a related field within two months of graduation. And frankly, the 5% that aren't usually want to take a break after um, two years of BCIC's intense schedule. And they go on vacation for a while um, before they look for a job. And, you know, you, you know, currently, you know, our, our grads with strong communication skills already have a job lined up. Like my, I have gra um, grads who are graduating in May, but they've already come in my office for, to discuss offer letters. Um, because they've never looked at an offer letter before because uh, employers are already offering them positions and it's February, uh, sorry, March. Uh, the meeting was in February, but it's already into March. So it's, it's, it's a really good time um, uh, for our grads. Lots of opportunity for advancement, promotion, and continued professional development. We have a lot of industries and organizations that we lead into and each of them have their own conferences and, and career streams, like a transportation career stream. You'll see now with a lot of these trucks hitting... Um, overpasses. There's a big focus on health and safety in the trucking industry. You see, sadly, with these crane accidents, there's going to be a huge focus on crane safety in BC now. And so there, uh, it's it's a terrible tragedy with what's happened, um, but it's going to create a lot of opportunity for health and safety professionals to get in there to fix the problems because organizations are going to want to make sure that they solve these problems so they don't get fined by the regulator. Um, so uh, graduates continue on for those who want to, to go on to do um, uh, other credentials like uh, MBA programs or um, environmental management or environmental health or environmental engineering and so forth. Okay, so this is the, one of the more important slides. Where do our grads work? Okay, so they work for educational institutions like BCIT or UBC or SFU or UVic. Um, they'll go work for private consulting firms. Um, a lot of the time, you know, when the regulator comes in and says, you shall fix this, um, they don't actually tell you how to fix it. They just expect you to fix it. And uh, smaller companies particularly need to hire consultants because they don't have the skills inside. So those consultants are our grads. Uh, health authorities such as Vancouver Coastal, Fraser Health, um, uh, Vancouver Island Health, the PHSA, all hire our grads. Uh, telecoms and utilities. So Rogers, Bell, uh, Fido, um, TELUS hire our grads, uh, Fortis and BC Hydro. BC Hydro has a fair number of our grads working there and they're always looking for more. 
um, school boards. Um, so there's a whole bunch of school boards. People don't realize that with all the municip you know, municipalities have their own school board. So the Surrey has a school board, New Westminster, Burnaby for the elementary and high schools. So our grads work for them. Um, so the cities like city of Vancouver, city of Richmond, the city of Burnaby, city of Coquitlam, and then there's municipalities. So, uh, sorry. Yes. And the municipalities are the same. And then there's regional districts, right? So um, Metro Vancouver is a regional district that's a, basically an organization of these cities or the Fraser Valley region, Regional District or the Thompson um, Nicolette Regional District. So they're all organizations that hire our grads. So all those are primarily around the government sector uh, or formerly government agencies that have spun off as private business. But there's all the industries on the non-government side, like agriculture um, companies, film and media is really big here in BC. And ever since the Deadpool and the Rust incident, there's a lot of focus on health and safety in film and media. We've had uh, mass, mass casualty events in concerts. So there's a big focus now to pull concerts into the umbrella of the film and media uh, health and safety programs. Construction is a huge employer. I, I would say a full third or more of our grads end up going into construction. Um, and many of them are quite interested in that. Um, forestry, food production, manufacturing, uh, the government sector I already mentioned, oil and gas for those interested, transportation, and a wide range of other settings. So, I mean, I, again, I listed off a lot of stuff because that's where our grads do. If somebody asks me, where's a grad going to go? I'm like, I don't know. They're, they could go to a lot of different places. And the best part is the day you get bored with one, you can move to another. If you're working at a school board and you decide you want to go work in an agriculture or film production, it's very easy to do because the, the we interpret regulation. And it, you know, there's a lot of hazards. A confined space in agriculture isn't really different than a confined space in food production. A confined space or electrical hazards in construction are similar to electrical hazards in film and media. So it it really doesn't matter where you work if you can put the lens on to see the hazards, uh, the category of risks and hazards that we teach in the program. So here's Adrian. Um, you know, he worked as a server and a landscaper before entering the uh, diploma program. Uh, thanks to the education he received, as well as the wisdom shared by guest speakers and in industries. He's ready to take the next step. He, he is. He's graduated. He works for an independent consulting firm. Um, and it's, you know, prepared him for a long, uh, rewarding career. And he loves his career. I actually just saw him the other day. I was visiting his office to speak to the consultant. And um, he was telling me, what, you know, how much he's enjoying the field um, and working in industry now. So, um, yeah. Thanks, Bobby. Actually, uh, you get to rest your voice for just a minute before Thanks, we get Dan. to the the Q&A, and I'm going to, uh, well, as briefly as I can, go through some admissions information. So uh, occupational health and safety, uh, full-time diploma has one take each year, one intake <laughs> every September, and uh, applications are accepted uh, online each year from October 1st to May 31st, and the date you apply does not have an impact on your application, and you will have until the deadline date to apply. Uh, filling out the online application is relatively straightforward. Uh, once the application opens for each cycle, uh, you can log in and review the online application. You can work on filling out the application at your own pace, and it does not go to admissions until you pay the application fee. And the date that you apply does not have an impact on your application, and uh, you have until the application deadline date to submit your application. And uh, regarding the application process, you will firstly review all the entrance requirements and application processing dates. You can find those on the uh, program page on the BCIT website. And uh, you'll then upgrade if necessary. And BCIT does offer some upgrading courses in many subjects and program advising can assist you with this. We'll get you the uh, contact information for program advising in a bit. And uh, just ensure that when you apply online that you have all your required documents, such as transcripts, ready to scan and upload as PDF files, as everything is online these days. And uh, bcit.ca slash admission can help guide you through the step-by-step -step application process. And once you are ready to apply online, just visit bcit.ca slash apply. And then you pay the application fee for domestic students, which is $90 Canadian. The application process takes place entirely online. Therefore, you will need to convert your official transcripts and any additional documents that may be required into PDF files. Entry into the program is competitive, and uh, the minimum academic entrance requirements are on the slide. If you can review that. Um, English Studies 12, uh, Chemistry 11, 50%, Physics 11 at 50%, and um, Precalculus 12 or Foundations of Math 12. 
and uh, there is a mandatory applicant questionnaire. But uh, this preferred requirements, I could, we could probably state that a little better, but <laughs> preference is given to uh, academic grades above the minimum, uh, general work experience with a minimum of two years, it's just recommended, and additional post-secondary academic courses. And the admissions process goes uh, first, uh, admission assesses online applications within two to four weeks. The applications that are complete are sent to the department. And then the department shortlists and selects applicants after the application deadline date. And then admission sends acceptance letters out. And there is a commitment fee of $500 for domestic. So for uh, laddering opportunities, um, you could go into a Bachelor of Technology in Environmental Health or a Public Health Inspector, Inspection, or a Bachelor of Technology in Technology Management, for example. And uh, now moving from the academics, I would like to uh, let you know that BCIT is committed to supporting students in a holistic sense. And we want you to succeed not only in your academics, but uh, also outside of school. And some of the student services are available to you as a prospective student, and others will be available once you become an enrolled student. And here are some of the important student supports that I'd like to mention. If you are Indigenous, BCIT's Indigenous Initiatives Department is there to ensure a smooth transition into your first year, and they offer peer-to-peer -peer mentorship, a welcoming gathering place, and provide clarification on Indigenous funding. And even if you're not an Indigenous um, student, you can go there and just ask questions, uh, learn more. They have all kinds of excellent, um, <laughs> I would say, educational things that you can uh, pick up on. Pardon me. Uh, BCIT's awards, scholarships, and bursaries are listed on our financial aid and awards webpage. And I'd like to mention that we have a President's Entrance Award. And the selection is based on academic achievement, but also volunteer and community service. And you can find out more information about that on the financial aid page. And BCIT is committed to providing assistance to students with permanent or temporary disabilities. And if you have been accepted to a program and believe that you may need accommodation to be successful, I encourage you to connect with our Accessibility Services Department. And BCIT's Student Health Services is a health clinic located on the Burnaby campus, and they provide medical care for current BCIT students all year round. And we also have a counseling and student development department, and they're available to help you enhance your educational performance and maximize your success as a student at BCIT. And last and most important <laughs> are recreation services. It promotes, encourages, and enables the practice of physical well-being, and we consider recreation an integral part of campus life and welcome all students to enjoy their services. Just a massive uh, gym, a huge weight room, a new climbing wall, and it's a very nice place and excellent service. Please don't hesitate to contact ProRec. Program advising, if you have a question or you're unsure about something, and uh, they can answer questions regarding entrance requirements, the application process, student resources, success strategies, and program schedules, and many other things. And they're available to assist you on specific days by email, in person, or virtual appointments. And uh, please go to the webpage, bcit.ca slash advising, for their most up-to-date contact information and service hours. The School of Health Sciences would love for you to connect with us on social. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, X, uh, Instagram, YouTube, uh, TikTok, fairly new, but we'd love to see you there, and uh, LinkedIn. And if you want to learn more about BCIT as a whole, you can go to bcit.ca and learn about uh, tours, uh, spend a day program for some programs have that, uh, more about big info, where you can find out about all the programs that BCIT offers, info sessions just like this one, and of course, uh, advising. And that takes us to the questions and answers segment. I noticed uh, a lot of action going on in the uh, chat there, but I have not been watching it. <laughs> I can so, uh, jump in, Darren, to kind okay, of take thanks. care of the questions. Um, thank you for um, uh, providing that information. Um, I'll start by uh, to uh, coming back to um, Jillian's question. Um, so uh, yes, you can. Um, grades are only one part of it. So I mean, we we do look at grades, but we kind of look equally at work experience, the application questionnaire, and then the grades. 
Um, I would say if you meet the prerequisites, I would apply um, because I will address this to a later question, but our program did not fill last year. So if you apply by April 4th, um, you have a fairly strong chance of getting in um, if our numbers hold the same way. So coming back up to um, the next question, if there's a serious safety accident, will the uh, you know person be sued or license taken away? No, there is insurance uh, that prevents that um, in businesses unless a person is, um, um, you know, uh, they're criminally negligent, which is kind of beyond the scope of our conversation. Um, you know, there there isn't a, like a suing or or license removal. Um, you know, as long as you're doing your job, you're protected. Um, and yeah, similar for any role in any organization. So now I think uh, Chan Wu's questions, I'll kind of go through them. Does a program recommend the person have a car uh, for their summer? It depends on the summer position. We have some where it's not necessary and other employers, you may need it. It really depends what position you apply for. There are employers that you basically just get to the site. So if you can take transit to get there, you're perfectly fine. Um, applications assessed um, only after the fourth deadline. Yes, we currently, our program, the model is that April 4th, all the applications are looked at and then reviewed and then admission letters are offered. Uh, as I said last year, everybody who applied and met the criteria was offered a letter. Um, next year, we're moving to a different model where we'll be, uh, you know, applicants will be uh, assessed as they come in and um, and offered pretty much uh, or not at that date if they have to meet the prerequisites or not. But currently, we are competitive entry. Um, can you use a mix of high school and university credits to meet the requirements? Yes, students do all that all the time. You know, you just need to meet the prerequisites. It doesn't really, if you, you know, your prerequisites are in, you know, chemistry 11, but you have a university level uh, chemistry class, that's fine. Um, are there any current industries that graduates have a difficult time breaking into as an entry level HSC professional uh, or complex industries? Um, yeah, possibly, but I, you know, it's hard. I don't, I've not run into anyone, you know, just, they all go in different places. I think maybe if they're expecting a senior level experience, you might have a challenge, but there's, you know, our students end up everywhere. So I, I, I haven't really seen a challenge getting into, if they're looking to hire someone, they will hire a student if it's the right fit. Now, if they want someone with more experience, um, for the role that that's different, but it's not necessarily, you know, it's because that's what the job entails. It's, you know, they're just not looking for entry level D domestic acceptance rate. Um, last year was hundred percent. So any domestic student who met the prerequisites and applied last year, uh, was offered a seat, uh, the construction site safety certificate at BCIT. It's not the same as our associate certificate. The CSO program is a two week, um, uh, field safety position. So, a uh, site safety officer. It's really a person who checks that you have hard hats on or wearing your hearing uh, hearing plugs, uh, earmuffs uh, and respirators. So you're just checking that. Our, so we're the people who develop the respirator program or the, uh, the fall protection program, not the people who check if you're actually wearing the fall protection, that's site safety. Um, so you're comparing that to a two week program to basically uh, ours at a minimum, the associate certificate is 18 months. They're not really comparable. Yeah, so I renew each year. I don't know what that means for the, because uh, I'm not really familiar with what the CSO program specifically requires. Um, our program, you get the diploma. And if you get a certification like the CRSP, um, you have continuing professional requirements. But uh, I'm, again, I can't really address what um, renewing every year means. That's a good, so the next question is about strong communication skills. Um, yeah, so... You know, I've had students without strong communication skills come through the program. And so we have four communication classes, uh, particularly young students, because sometimes have a challenge with that. So we mentor them and we get them a lot of experience talking to people and getting out there. I mean, experience, you know, it's easy to teach technical skills. It is difficult to teach behavior. So uh, some students I recommend they do Toastmasters. I've had students who had, um, you know, weren't very good communicators and they got their summer jobs and they came back. And they just had to talk to people in the summer and they came back radically different and they had, you know, developed very good communication skills. So that's something that comes with experience. So somebody who has um, struggles with communication, they're just going to have to practice. And that is part of their learning journey, I would say. Um, for the diploma program, can acceptance be deferred if financial aid is not secured? Uh, we do not have a deferral program. Students, um, they'd have to reapply every year. But that being said, any student who's not uh, God, you know, had I've had a student, you know, during COVID, they had to reapply two years in a row. Um, you know, they're generally moved to the top of the list um, for for getting a seat the next year. But we do not um, officially have a deferral. We do. I'm um, sorry, Irene is asking about the distance program. Yes, we do have a flexible learning program. So, um, I if you know, it's a, the associate certificate and the um, and the advanced safety management certificate. 
Um, I thank you, uh, Jaren, for putting it on. You can just go to the web page and if you find the associate certificate in the foundations of OHS, that's the first credential there. I, 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 did I miss any questions or does anybody have any other follow-up questions they may have about the program? Recent, I, I think we, you know, we have adult learners who come in through our program all the time, particularly in, you know, from trades or other backgrounds who have not been to school for a while. Um, so I've never seen us reject from my experience, grades, uh, like a high school that was done in 2006, it's accepted. Uh, transfer credits usually have a five-year recency, I believe, but not for entry requirements. Thanks, and you can me. always reach out to me Sorry. directly um, if you have any follow-up questions or you'd like to spend a day at the program. We regularly have students come spend a day, talk to the first and second year students. Sometimes they time it so there's a guest lecture, so an industry expert is there. We have lots of guest lectures and they can speak to the industry uh, person as well about their career journey just to see, you know, um, as well. Uh, no, the diploma is not a distance option. It's only certificate. Uh, you know, whether the you do the diploma or certificate really depends on the person and what's right for them. The career outcomes are the same. They're different journeys to get to the same place. Um, the diploma does have an easier entrance into industry because of the networking um, involved in that program. Certificates usually better for people who can't leave their jobs or who are already working a safety role in a company and they want to meet the academic requirements of the CRSP credential. That's our typical cohort in our um, certificate program where a lot of our diploma students are, they have no background in safety and, and they're really looking as entry to practice. Um, even though this, I would say, you know, I say entry to practice, but the salary outcomes are very strong for those grads, especially if you have work experience, then you're, you're really, you really um, ladder right into a, a regular full-time position. And uh, our program regularly has jobs sent to us directly and we share those. So employers, some employers preferentially hire BCIT OHS grads because the people who work there came through the BCIT program. So they understand its quality. And so they send the positions directly to me, which I share out. I sent one out today. Um, I send them out pretty regularly. I would say almost every week I receive a position um, that they want, uh, you know, the one today specifically sorry, the one la uh, last week specifically said they were looking for a BCIT graduate of the program. Um, our program usual start times vary, um, usually around 8.30, well, not usually, 8.30 is the earliest, but there's plenty of classes that start at 8.30. I would say uh, the latest on the day is 4.30. Um, I think one class, one term may end at 5.30, but it's equivalent to almost like a full-time job commitment for time. Thank you, Bobby and Maggie. We're almost at time. I uh, just wanted to reiterate, uh, while anyone's getting in a last minute question here, that a copy of the slide presentation and a link to the info session video recording will be sent out to all the registrants uh, within the next week or two. And so if you did miss anything or if you wanted to get, don't want to have to screenshot everything and write down email addresses, uh, we will have it sent to you. So be patient and that will show up soon. And I haven't seen any more questions coming in. And we have uh, less than a minute left, so I guess I'm going to say a thank you to everyone for being here. Uh, thanks to Bobby for his presentation and Maggie behind the scenes answering questions in the chat. And uh, we really appreciate you coming out, and uh, we wish you all the best. And uh, maybe we'll see you on campus soon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, and have a great night.